What's up YouTube? Today new photo shoot inspired by the greatest thief, a burglar. Yes, but he's a gentleman. Okay, I just got mugged by a gang of pigeons. I just paid uh, almost 25 euros for a simple espresso. What the f mm, No doubt, I'm back in Paris. One thing I like to do to diversify the photo shoots on the channel is to draw inspiration from movie visual universe or TV shows, you know? Add a little pop culture flavor from time to time. And Netflix just released the second part of Lupin with this fellow French guy I like, Omar Sy. I love the way they illustrated Paris in the show, so I wanted to take some pictures with this. Oh no. No way. No. Oh. Okay, you're not gonna believe it, I forgot my ND filters. I know I don't have a brain, but... Ah, Oh no, but you can't tell me it's okay, not in that case. If there is a day where they are essential, it's today. I don't even know if we can do the photo shoot now. Well, let's try to see what we can do anyway. Today, Simon, himself an actor, will work with me on this photo shoot. Bah bonjour YouTube, Simon Colino, enchanté. Euh, futur Omar Sy, bien sûr, tout le monde le sait. Et puis d'être là avec Nico euh, en cette belle journée à Paris. The idea was to meet at the Louvre to try to reproduce some of the visuals of the series. The beginning of the show is about a robbery in the museum. And it's particularly this image with the pyramid that interests me. So why do I need ND filters for this shoot? Because of that. Our time frame to shoot was between 4 pm and 6 pm in bright sunlight. Yes, I know that shooting in daylight is not the best option to be on the universe of the show. Very nocturnal, Lupin acts in the middle of the night, you know. Yeah, I agree, but it's the beginning of summer. The sun rises early and sets at almost 10 pm. And the problem in France, because of the situation, blah blah blah, global pandemic, we're still under this curfew thing between 6 am and 9 pm. Besides, Simon was only in the capital for a few hours. But I really thought we could still get something out of it if we had had the right tools, yeah. You know, I like shooting in guerrilla mode with only natural light. I didn't even take a little reflector, nada. What are ND filters used for? ND stands for neutral density. They absorb radiation. Basically, they block a more or less large part of the light. For example, you want to do a long exposure to capture the movement of a waterfall. If you are in daylight, you can't expose for several seconds without your image being overexposed. The ND filter will block part of the light to be able to make the necessary exposure time. If you shoot in full sun, in addition to ISO and shutter speed, of course you can block the excess light by closing your aperture. But at the expense of the depth of field, if you want it shallow for portrait for example. Some ND filters also have the big advantage of being gradual and of being applied only on a part of the image, just for the sky for example, or a background that is too bright compared to the foreground subject. And that's going to be exactly the concern here, the dynamic range of my camera. We have a very strong light and Simon is dressed all in black, plus there is the skin tone. These are all the skin tones that we know of on the planet, and not all of them react the same way to light. Knowing what type of lighting for what type of skin is also part of the photographer's role. I, for example, have a skin tone that corresponds to a precise value, which is scientifically called uh, white as an ass. Since the lockdown, I think I've gone down a shade to white walker. Simon, he doesn't have this problem, sure, but it's going to be very hard to get detail in his face with such a bright background. These very, very bad unedited images illustrate the problem. If I expose for the background, I can only get Simon in silhouette. If I expose for the subject, my background is overexposed. I have no information in the highlights. I spent a while doing several trials to try to find settings that will give me an acceptable average of information where I know I can make up for something in the editing. And when you had to add the difficulty of my autofocus to find the focus on his eyes because of his face in the shadow of the beret, or the fact that I'm forced to close my aperture to the point that the subject can't come out since the background is just as sharp. Also, timing is important when you're shooting at one of the most touristy places in the world. It can be smart to avoid the rush hour. 
On the spot, I was thinking I could delete all these people in post, but I don't really like doing that. For vlogs, I avoid retouching. I prefer to show you what you can get directly, even in guerrilla mode. Here is the best I could get, but there are still too many identifiable elements in the background, and the light is still more than... meh. Anyway, for the moment, it smells like a failure. But keep face, little one. We can make it. To solve the problem of the tourists, we will leave the Napoleon courtyard to go to one of the big halls. I will be able to have an even more interesting composition, but on the other hand, my light problem will be even more present, since Simon will now be placed undercover, accentuating, even more, the contrast between the height and low light zones. One solution I could try here is bracketing, which is when you ask your camera to take several photos, usually three at different exposure values. One underexposed, one in medium value, and one overexposed, to be able to take advantage of a wide spectrum of information in post-production. Very often it is used to make HDR, that is to say that you will add the levels of information of the three images. That gives this super particular rendering of the images in 32 bits with these billion super saturated colors. Personally, I find that very ugly already on landscape, but then more on portrait, it's not possible. Here are our three images. We are not going to add the exposure values. I'm going to use the masks in Photoshop to use only certain zones of each image. The one where the background is correctly exposed. Then I'm going to recover the detail in his face and then his clothes. The result is already nicer. So yes, the photo is not at night, but eh, at least we have that. À Paris. Another solution, well, simply to shoot indoor. It's not really the majestic decorations which are missing here. We will benefit from the colonnades and the vault. I wanted to use the contrast between cold and warm colors thanks to the lamp post. But in the end, not that it's um, uninteresting, but it's not what we are looking for here. This image tells a lot more, and that's precisely storytelling that we are going to need today. By the way, I let you watch my last video entirely dedicated to this subject. You'll love it. That's it. End of the self-promotion moment. To create a universe, our photos have to tell something, and in our case, this something has to be related to the universe of the series or the books. The model's elusive gaze, a few mysterious silhouettes in the background, and we already have the beginning of a story. Regarde vers moi, voilà, comme ça, mais pas moi en fait, voilà, exactement comme ça. The low angle always works to put a character in a dominant position. Plus the fact that we have a perfect reading of the image thanks to the separation of the shoots in terms of color and focal plane, it puts Simon, aka Hassan, aka Lupin, really in the situation you feel is going to brain us to come up with a genius shot. I would say yes and no here. I like the leading lines, with this triangle composition totally broken by the random curves of the vault. I like the addition of the book. But for the I don't like part, we have these two additions of colors that don't bring much if not disrupt the reading. So yes, I could easily retouch that, but yeah. The low angle is a little too forced, and his attitude with closed eye gives a feeling more religious than mastermind at work. You know what, let's change location and go one level down, where there's usually no one, with the inverted pyramid under the carousel du Louvre. We'll still have a problem of luminosity, because the sun outside eats the glass very hard, but at the same time it will allow us to get the cyan blue of the sky and to oppose it to the orange of the artificial lights of the hall, in addition to taking advantage of a lot of geometrical elements to compose our images. Example here, where to play only with the teal and orange, I put Simon in silhouette. A lot of opportunities to play on the guidelines, symmetry, contrast, different focal planes where here the focus is on the background, the pyramid. It gives quite nice cryptic images. At the time of shooting, I thought it could symbolize Lupin's mind, all the connections that are made in his head, etc. But in the end, yeah, I think we move away from the universe here. Yeah. Likewise, we have some nice portraits here. Yeah, okay, but we are more in a fashion atmosphere. Cool for sure, but not very mind game. There too, it's totally out of the subject. It looks more like a liturgy than a reading of Maurice Leblanc. Here we are better, yeah. 
here we have some mystery while remaining in a simple portrait. So it depends a bit on what time of day you ask me. But sometimes I prefer this one, where you just have his eyes visible. Sometimes I prefer this one, where it reveals his face a bit more. But whether it's one or the other, we're pretty much on the theme here. So yes, there is my way of editing my images that doesn't fit too well with this colorimetry. I will use another one for my future presets, like this. Up, the title, Lupin, Netflix. Don't tell me we are not onto something here. Hey Netflix, you're looking for a DOP? Call me next time. Well, yeah. Alors, Monsieur Lupin, on a fait un faux pas? Imbécile. Quand Lupin se fait arrêter, figure-toi, c'est qu'il l'a bien voulu. Awesome Lupin. C'est le plus grand des voleurs. Okay, we have to admit it, it's a real handicap not to be able to shoot at night. So the last solution is also to change direction a little and work on something a little more graphic. It was pretty silly not to take advantage of the pyramid and the reflections it provides. But again, we're going to play with the reflection and the diffraction of the glass, like we did with Emily's shoot. Cinepax had sent me some other filters to test a while ago, but well, context. It's not even for this shoot that I wanted to use them, but for next one that I hope will come uh, this summer. It's to make mosaic effects, a bit like with did things, you know? Am I handsome? <coughs> Depending on the angle and placement of the lens, you're going to get different results. Like here, with environmental reflections or blurring effects. It's always a lot of fiddling around with the filter to try and make the effect interesting. Here I wanted to frame his face with the reflection. In this image, I like the addition of the book over the heart, but I like this one a hundred times better. I find the look on the side is much more dramatic, the framing is more interesting, and the bokeh better position. But the main effect is obviously the mosaic effect, and that totally fits the theme. In addition to this feeling of mystery, this psychedelic side, it can represent the mind of the character, you know, his brain that works at another level than ours. But yeah, that's definitely the image to use for the promo, actually. We will talk more about these filters, but if you're interested, again, there is an affiliate link in the description, along with a list of all the gear I use for my shoots. Look at this image, pure graphic design. These lines, these colors, his silhouette broken into several pieces. Nah, I love it. And while we are on the subject of our favorite images, we still have this opposition between straight guidelines and the curves of the vault. We have the book that takes the focus, leaving his face in the blur. We have the long girl. We have the effect of light that I find very well placed, plus the one on his head, as if we could see an ID directly emerge from his mind. And finally, the reflection of the column, but which gives the feeling of a light ray coming from the sky and giving illumination to our character. Wow, bravo. Bravo. So yeah, tastes and colors. I agree that it could feel like a lot of elements and give an overloaded side to the image. On the other hand, I have this portrait, more simple. At the moment, I force myself to work at least one black and white image in my photo shoots. I still prefer color, even if it's more complex. But on this very minimalist picture, it makes sense to remove the saturation and create shapes only with the contrast. To be honest with you, I can't figure out if I like this image only for personal taste or if it's intrinsically good. Let me explain. One of the things I like here, for example, is that the focus is nowhere. In fact, it's on the little ornament here, but in no way can it be the subject. It should be either on the face or on the title, so it's not academically correct. Well, that's what I like here. Yeah, so anyway, you can tell me what you think in the comments. Simon, thanks for your time, we'll shoot again very soon. Omar, I know you're going to watch this video, for sure. Uh, keep going, when you can play both comedy and dramatic roles so well, you're in the pantheon of great actors. Netflix again, if you need visuals. Well, for today, we rushed a bit, I admit. We had to do the shoot in just over two hours, including a part where we stopped to eat the crepe. And uh, <laughs> damn, I can't believe I forgot my filters. But don't worry, when I get serious about it, it's almost better, so call me. YouTube, my friend, you, I will put a much more complete video about storytelling here, if you're interested. And um, yeah, see you, mate. Keep on creating. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Et puis du mieux ça